height? Well, it's around 9.30 in the evening, a little bit past that here, Pacific Daylight Time. And this is Bible in a Year, day 265 of 365, which is our reading for September 22nd. And I am excited to be with you today because one of my very favorite texts um, in the entire Bible is uh, contained in our reading from the book of Isaiah today. So welcome all of you who are already here and are joining me. Marco's here, Naomi's here, Julia's here, Patrice, or Trish is here. Um, our Lego truck driver is in the house. <laughs> uh, and um, Arnold is here as well. So welcome everybody to this very special edition of the Bible in a Year, uh, day 265 of 365, and I had forgotten that I'm going to do two readings every day except for on day 265, because on day 265 we wanted to celebrate getting to day 265. Make sense? So hello everybody, welcome. Um, today we are going to be taking a look at um, Isaiah 39, 1 through 41, 16, Ephesians 1, 1 through 23, Psalm 66, 1 through 20, and Proverbs 23, 25 to 28. And as previously stated, um, Before the end of this year, we're going to be all caught up. And um, I have to ask, Naomi, am I allowed to share with people the tentative um, plans that are coming up at the end of the year? See if I can get a thumbs up from her on that. Because we definitely need everyone to be praying. There is an exciting possibility for the future. So, uh, friends, it is possible... It is possible that I will actually be doing day 365 of the Bible in a Year Instagram Live challenge in, drum roll everybody, Australia. That's right. I have received a speaking invitation uh, to go to Australia from December 26th through January 9th this coming year to be a part of a... Um, summer camp that's being put on and so it looks like I may get an opportunity to travel and go to Australia and um, it's actually at a health camp that is four and a half hours south of Perth and there is going to be a youth revival taking place and there's going to be uh, a morning prayer time that I'm going to be leading and there's going to be some Bible work going on um, and so this is just an exciting opportunity to travel internationally and to continue to live my dream of being a world evangelist for God. I'm so excited and hey, I'm actually going to get to meet Naomi in person. So this will be a lot of fun. Uh, it's crazy how this Bible in a Year Instagram Live and Challenge um, has created a community of people who are reading the Bible from here to the East Coast and Florida and Australia and you name it. So... Um, Yes, uh, Patrice says, oh my gosh, that's like us going to Oregon, haha, ha. Perth is so far away. R right. No, Perth is, where are you at, Patrice? Um, I'm trying to remember where you're from. No, yeah, me going to Perth and then from there going to where I'm going to be traveling is like 34 and a half hours worth of travel or some kind of a crazy thing. So yeah, uh, it's definitely a stone's throw from my front porch. <laughs> Anyway, I am so excited. Um, oh, you're in Queensland. Okay. So you are also in Australia. Well, hey, maybe you can come out to the to, to the camp and, and I'll get a chance to, to meet you as well. Be wonderful. Uh, anyway, so yes, uh, it I, I might be going to Australia. I'm very excited about this. 
which means um, I will be finishing the Bible in a Year reading challenge while in Australia. Um, so anyway, um, definitely be praying uh, for me as God um, works to get this out of district approved at the conference level. Okay, uh, we are going to dive into God's word. I'm very excited. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we will start in Isaiah chapter 39, verse 1. Here we go. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Bible in a Year, uh, for our opportunity to encourage each other to spend time in your word every day and to be praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and reading your word. Um, be with us now as we look at the readings for September 22nd. We are going to be starting in Isaiah chapter 39. I just ask that your Holy Spirit will uh, guide me to the highlights that would be the biggest blessing to those that are listening and that will listen to this video possibly in the future. Be with us now and um, show us... Um, beautiful truths about how much you love us in your word today is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, Isaiah chapter 39. Now, I want to back up a little bit because in Isaiah 38, um, we actually see that uh, King Hezekiah prays for God to see, save his life, because in, in Isaiah chapter 38, Hezekiah is sick, right? And it says um, that the prophet came and told Isaiah, or Hezekiah that he was going to die, right? And then in Ezekiel 38, um, after he got the thus saith the Lord, um, and, and I'll just read starting in uh, verse 1, part C, I think it is. Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Okay, so the prophet comes to Hezekiah and says this. Set your house in order, for you shall die, you will not recover. And what happens? Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Please, O Lord, remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight, and Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and will defend this city. You guys, I love this. I mean, recently I've been going through some health challenges of my own and I have cried out to God and I have prayed and I have asked all of you to pray for me. And guess what? Today I went and saw my doctor for my annual physical and they have now authorized an MRI and they will be looking at my spine and will be able to help me to determine why I'm having the symptoms I'm having, why I'm having the pain I'm having. Maybe we can locate the pinched nerve and, um, you know, they can inject a steroid or something to help with the healing process to heal me. And so after an entire year of praying and contending, the Lord has seen fit to answer my prayer and to move on my behalf to bring healing. But I love this because King Hezekiah receives the word from the prophet that he's going to die and that he's not going to recover. And King Hezekiah prays and he cries out to God and he asks him for mercy. And he reminds him that he has been walking before him in faithfulness. And he also tells God, he says, listen, I can't praise you from the grave. Right? And so um, God answers his prayer and adds 15 years to his life. Friends, uh, we can cry out to God in our darkest moments, and God, who hears in heaven, has the ability to answer our prayer. He is the one who is capable of offering years to our life. And um, it's really interesting, though. It's tragic, because when we go to Isaiah chapter 39, we see here a story about how after Hezekiah um, recovers... Um, some visitors come from um, Babylon, and um, 
Hezekiah decides to show these visitors from Babylon all of the riches in his storehouse. Okay, so everybody turn to Isaiah chapter 39, and um, you see here in verses 1 through 4 the story that Hezekiah ends up showing uh, the envoy or the people who come from Babylon all of the treasures in his house. And what ends up happening? Then Isaiah says to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. Friends, there is a practical application. We need to be careful that we do not cast our pearls before swine. We need to be careful that we don't cast our pearls in front of people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. We do not want to share the blessings that God is pouring out in our life proudly with people who are the enemy. Often when we share the things that God is doing in our life with people who are serving the enemy, they will be used by the enemy to actually discourage us, to put us down, to take uh, what God has given us, the blessing that God has given us, and twist it and try to turn it into a curse. And so we need to be careful who we share the blessings God is pouring out in our lives with. We have to be careful that we do not allow our pride to cause us to share all that God has given us with the enemy. Right? Because that is like provoking the enemy to attack you. And people who are sadly not serving the Lord and have not repented and have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit and reborn are, are like empty houses that can be filled with the powers and principalities of darkness in the unseen heavenly realms to be used by the enemy to attack us and to take from us that which God has bestowed upon us. Pride, friends is a very dangerous thing. And so here's Hezekiah humbled by his sickness. He turns toward God and prays, and God adds 15 years to his life. And what does Hezekiah do when he recovers from his sickbed? He ends up sharing all that is in the storehouses, all of the blessings that God has given him with people who come from a land and a kingdom that do not worship the Lord and that do not worship God and who worship false gods. And so... What ends up happening? As a result, Hezekiah's pride causes a very terrible thing to happen. Because you see, people who do not serve God, people who operate according to the flesh, people who operate according to the laws of the kingdoms of man and of the prince of darkness, are more than willing to use their armies and their power and their might to take that which God has blessed us with. And so Isaiah comes and tells Hezekiah the sad news that as a result of his pride, as a result of him sharing with the people from Babylon all of the wealth that was stored up in his storehouses, that the time was coming that when these uh, people from Babylon would return, right, and carry away everything that the Lord had blessed Hezekiah with. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And he says, And some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good, for he thought there will be peace and security in my days. Friends, Hezekiah seems to be a little bit of a narcissist. The word of the Lord is good. The word that the Lord has given through you to me that you have spoken is good. Why? Because, well, at least there's going to be peace and security during the time that I'm alive. Mm -mm -mm. And so, friends, let me ask you a question. What are we going to do?
with the time that God has given us? Are we going to be selfish like Hezekiah? Or will we be wise and spend our time praising God and serving others? You see, instead of lifting God up, When the Lord added 15 years to Hezekiah's life, he decided to show off his possessions that the Lord blessed him with to people who didn't serve the Lord, but instead were a part of a kingdom that was worshiping false gods and serving the enemy. And what can you expect when people who are worshiping false gods and serving, thusly serving the enemy, what can you expect they're going to do? When you share with them the blessings that the one true God of Israel has bestowed upon you. Okay. Well, let's go on to Isaiah chapter 40. I love verses 3, 4, and 5 of Isaiah chapter 40. It says, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Oh, my friends, what a promise we can claim. Uh, all the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is actually a prophecy pointing forward to the time when Jesus will come in the clouds. Isn't that true? And I love what it says in Isaiah 40, verse 8. Listen to this. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Friends, the promise that we just read in Isaiah 40, verses 3, 4, and 5 is going to come true because the word of God can never return to him void. The word of God will stand forever. And Isaiah 40, verse 10, Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, right? And his recompense before him. Friends, the Lord is going to come in might. His arm rules for him. Behold, behold his reward is with him for all who believe on him and his recompense before him. The Lord's coming is a great blessing, and it will be good no news for those who have placed their life in his hands. But it's also going to be good news, friends, for those who have chosen to follow the enemy. Why? His recompense goes before him. If we were capable of living as sinners separated from God eternally, we would live in eternal suffering. And so when God comes with the reward of eternal life for those who have placed their faith in him, that is a blessing. And when God comes with his recompense, when he comes with judgment for those who have chosen to follow the enemy, that is also a blessing and an act of mercy on God's part towards those who have chosen not to place their faith in Jesus Christ. Friends, in this life, we only really have one option. We only really have one option. We can either choose self, which leads to destruction, or we can choose God. We can choose selflessness. We can choose to allow God to use us to serve others. And I just love this. Behold, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him. It's a beautiful promise. And, and listen to this. Listen to what he says about the nations of this world. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. And then listen to this in verse 17. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Friends, the kingdoms of this world and all that this world affords is nothing, is absolutely nothing uh, compared to God's kingdom and to what he has promised you and I. Well, 
I can't look at these passages without going to Isaiah 40, verse 27. Listen to this. Why do you say, O Jacob? Isaiah 40, verse 27. Give me a thumbs up when you guys are there. Um, Isaiah 40, and starting in verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? So some people think, whatever I'm doing, God doesn't know about it, right? But that's not true. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Um, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. What this is saying is, is listen, do you think that God doesn't know about your life? Do you think God doesn't know? about the things that you're facing and that you're going through? Do you think that God doesn't know about what you're doing? Do you think that your ways are really hidden from the one who created the heavens and the earth? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Of course, he knows about every detail of your life, and he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. In fact, God actually knows everything about your life, and he knows about the plans that he has for your life now and in the future. He is in control if you will put your life in his hands his understanding and his ways are unsearchable and he does not grow weary okay and in verse 29 what does it say he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might he increases strength just like hezekiah who turned to god when he found out that his life was about to end and he prayed to god and then he ended up receiving 15 years added on to his life, right? Just like Hezekiah who had that happen for him, the same can happen for us. He gives power to those who are fainting. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. I know God has been doing that for me and has brought me all the way through this trial that I've had with my health to the point where the doctors are getting answers I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom and all the world as a witness to all the nations. Um, in fact, as I announced earlier, I'm going to be going to Australia here soon. Uh, God willing, I'm going to be there December 26th through the 9th at a big summer camp doing revival for the youth and the young adults of Australia. Can't wait. Ah, God is healing me. He's, he's um, reviving my health and sending me to Australia to be a world evangelist. I can't wait. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, it's a lifetime dream of mine to go to Australia. Um, I was hoping to go to Sydney and, uh, uh, for New Year's and see the fireworks, but um, going to Perth and traveling to this health camp and this summer camp and being a part of a youth revival will be absolutely amazing. And so... I will just have to make a second trip to Australia to Sydney at another time. Yes, I'm sure that God can arrange that. In fact, I know that there's major evangelistic campaigns that happen in Sydney, and so maybe I can go and be a part of that with one of the evangelists there in Australia. So he, uh, let's go back to Isaiah 40, verse 29. It says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men, young men shall fall exhausted. Ah, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, this is one of my favorite verse. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, friends, I don't know what's going on in your life today. I, I don't know what you're facing today, but I, I do want to say this. Whatever it is that's happening in your heart and in your mind, whatever it is that's troubling you, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling weak, you can come to God. He will give you strength and he will cause you to mount up on wings like eagles. I know that over the last several years of my life, I have gone through many trials, discouragements, but God is seeing me through them all, and God is good, and he's still allowing me to be used by him to 
share his word, which never returns to him void, and to continue to point people to Jesus. When we're weary, when we're tired, when we're discouraged, when when we're heartbroken, when when life seems to have more trials than it does answers, we can go to God. He will renew our strength. We will mount up on wings like eagles. God can help us to overcome every obstacle in our way and help us to soar over every mountain that the enemy tries to place in our path that's in the way of God's plan for our life. Okay, let's move on to Ephesians. Ah, listen to this. In Christ, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 7, give me a amen or a thumbs up when you get there. Give me an amen or a thumbs up when you get to Ephesians um, Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 7. Listen to this. It says, In him, in Jesus, we have, a, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Friends, it brings me so much relief to know that God forgives me for the sin in my life. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. I have certainly made many mistakes in my life. And I am so grateful that the Lord forgives us according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. You guys, his kingdom can come and his will can be done because Jesus came and gave his life so that we can be born again Christians, so that we can be united together with him, so that we can become living stone built on Christ the cornerstone, so that we can become a part of the body of Christ, so that Jesus in his insight and in his wisdom can make known to us the mystery of his will, which is eternal life through him, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. He has the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in himself, all of the things in heaven and all of the things on earth. Yes, even before time began, Jesus planned on giving us eternal life. Titus 1 verse 2 says, God who cannot lie promised you eternal life before time even began. I hope that puts a song in the heart of each and every single one of you who are listening today. Listen to this, Ephesians 1 verse 13, in him you also when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, we're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Friends, when we believe on Christ, we are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Do you know how important it is to understand that it is the Holy Spirit who places the seal of God on us? And it is that seal that preserves us alive when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Listen to this. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, we're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the what? Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Did you know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the seal of God on your life, which guarantees the inheritance of eternal life that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord? By faith in Jesus, we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is the seal that guarantees our inheritance. <laughs> the Bible says in Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just have to finish the rest of this chapter. Listen to this. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the work of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all who rule and all the authority and power and dominion of this earth and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the ones to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. You know, one of the things that has helped me get through several of the things that have happened in my life in this last year is remembering that all of the people that I love, all of the people that I have um, crossed paths with, all of the people who have come into my life and out of my life, and all of the people who I've met in ministry all of the people from the youth revivals and the summer camps and from all of the trips that I've gone on and everything else. Friends, all of you who have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, I know that I am going to see you in eternity. I know I'm going to get to see you in heaven. And I continue to pray without ceasing for each and every single one of you because... The things of this world, the things that happen in this life are not important um, in the eyes of eternity. You know, we go through things in this life which are very hard in the moment. But um, I know that as long as I keep my eyes on Jesus and I keep my eyes on eternity, I can remember that the most important thing I can do for every person that's ever been in my life is pray for them. And pray that they will keep their eyes on Jesus and that they will not lose their faith. Because as long as we continue to keep our faith in Jesus, as long as we remember that our faith in Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, which is our seal that guarantees our inheritance of eternal life, as long as we turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, then the things of earth, the, the things of this earth, the things which we used to hang on to before we came to the Lord will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. What a beautiful passage that is. And so I want each and every single one of you to know that I am continuing to pray for all of you without ceasing, that you will not lose sight of Jesus, that you will hold on to that faith, that the Lord will pour out his Holy Spirit on you in a powerful way and that you will return to that first love that you had for Jesus, that love that you had for Jesus that led you to get baptized. I mean, how many of you that are listening right now can remember the day that you were baptized and how important that day was for you and how beautiful that day was in your life? Well, friends, um, remember that love that you had that led you to make the decision to repent and to be baptized by water and to receive the Holy Spirit for the first time. And it's my prayer, as I continue to pray for each and every single one of you, that God will um, bless you and that he will help you to keep your eyes on him and that you will not lose your faith. Because it is our faith in Jesus, it is that baptism of the Holy Spirit that is the seal that guarantees the inheritance of eternal life that Jesus Christ has made possible for you and for me. Okay, uh, let's go to Psalms 65. And um, the, the psalm that I chose from today's reading um, is Psalm 66, verse 5. Here's what it says. Come and see. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of man. Naomi says she likes Psalm 66, 16, and 19. Let's skip over there. 
Come and hear all who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. And then verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Verse 20. Blessed be God because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Well, friends, I'm going to tell you something. I cannot believe this, but tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> Another entire year of my life has gone by. It's funny because... Around this time last year, I was just returning from wilderness wanderings in Southern California, and I'm going to be doing a Zoom call tomorrow night, um, a little bit of a Vespers with many of the people who attended that event. And um, it's mind-blowing to me that it's already been an entire year and that I am turning uh, 41 years old tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Oh, this year has gone by very fast, and um, it has certainly um, been filled with uh, several trials, um, certainly some discouragements and things, but at the same time, it has been filled with many miracles. Um, the revival at the Village Church, um, Camp Myvedon this year, Teen Camp, going up there and preaching and, and having people choose Jesus and all of the baptisms and, oh, God, has so many more things in store. I'm going to be doing a week of prayer next week, and then at the end of this year, I'll be going off to Australia for um, for a youth revival down there, uh, four and a half hours south of Perth, and it's a, it's a resort, it's a health resort, and so I'm so excited because I'm going to get to take advantage of some of the steam baths and massage therapy and all kinds of wonderful things down there in Australia. So um, I think it's probably part of God's plan that I'm going to Australia to uh, not only be a part of some evangelism down there, but to also get the opportunity to do a little bit of um, learning on how I can take better care of my health so that I can preach the gospel longer. I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons why... I want to stay alive and, and stay healthy um, is because I'm not done preaching the gospel of the kingdom into all the world as a witness to all the nations. And so <laughs> I'm praising God that he's opening up avenues and um, ways for me to take care of my health. And I'm praising God that uh, my doctors have finally ordered an MRI and that they're going to be getting to the bottom of what's going on with my health um, so that I can actually get the help that I need, and um, I really believe this is an answer to the prayers of many people. I know that all of you have been praying for me, and so I just want to say thank you to all of you that are on the live right now. I know that each and every single one of you love me and care about me and have been praying for me, and I, I appreciate all of your prayers because I know that it is your intercessory prayers um, that are are bringing the blessings of God into my life. And so thank you so much for that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our Proverbs. Now today's Proverbs is very interesting. It's Proverbs 23, 25 to 28, and I'll give you guys a chance to get there. Proverbs 23, 25 to 28. And uh, we are on Bible in a Year, day 265, which is for September 22nd. And as you guys know, um... I'm going to be doing two um, two readings every single day uh, moving forward to get caught up once again. We have fallen behind before um, as a result of me traveling and speaking and doing different kinds of things. Sometimes I just really do not have the ability to do the Bible in a year Instagram lives. And so um, we will be doing two a days until we get caught up again. I know that God helped me to get caught up last time when I was like 20 days behind. He's going to do it again. He is faithful, and um, we're just going to keep going, and it seems like I'm probably going to be in Australia December 26th through the new year, so this means that the final Bible in a Year Instagram Lives are going to be happening in Australia. Very exciting. Okay, I hope all of you have had the chance to turn to Proverbs chapter 23, starting in verse 25, and it says, 
Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. And then listen to this. This is very interesting. Switch gears here. Proverbs 23, 26 through 28 is a very interesting Proverbs. It, it sounds like it's directed towards men, but ladies, listen up, because this proverb is for you too. In Proverbs 23, 26, 27, and 28, it says, My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit, an adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber and increases the traitors among mankind. Hmm. Well, this seems to suggest that we want to guard our heart and we want to give our heart to God. So I think men and women alike, um, we need to listen to the wisdom that is um, proclaimed here. We need to give our hearts to God. It says, my son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. What is this telling us? It's telling us that we do not want to fall prey to the lust of the flesh. We don't want to allow um, our eyes to wander. Um, and we want to make sure that we give our heart to God. Because when our heart is safely in God's hands, then we can trust that as our eyes are on God, that we will live by the Spirit rather than being... Um, persuaded by the flesh or the things of this world, by the kingdoms of men, by the pride of life, by the things of, of this world that can um, easily entice us and take our heart and our mind away from what life is truly about, which is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that he can give us all that we need. Friends, as we acknowledge God in all of our ways, he will always show us which path to take. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will bless us. And it is my prayer, friends, that each and every single one of you will continue to spend time daily in God's word. Um, you know, if you're like me and you have fallen behind in your Bible in a year reading challenge, my, my encouragement to you is don't give up. Keep going. Just take time every day. Spend time in God's word. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. And as we saw in Ephesians um, chapter 1 today, the Holy Spirit is the seal that God places on you, which is the guarantee of your inheritance of eternal life. Um, you know, I want to close today by um, asking one of you to uh, volunteer to come on and say the closing prayer for us today. And uh, while we're getting ready to do the closing prayer, I would just like to invite any of you that are here to um, put prayer requests um, in the chat. So if you have a prayer request that you would like um, our volunteer to pray for today, or if you would like me to pray, me or the volunteer, um, I would like to invite. Is there anyone that would like to join me on the live to say the closing prayer for Bible in a Year, day 265? which is the reading from September 22nd, for those of you that are following our Bible in a Year reading plan. Who would be willing to come on? Just give me an amen if you're that person, and I can invite you to join me on the live. And Marco has put a prayer request in the chat. He says, Please pray for my cousin, Nikki. She has a big decision to make tomorrow. Does anybody else have a prayer request that they would like prayed for? And is there anybody that's available that would like to come on to say our closing prayer today? Um, Lynn Rydell says, Jocelyn is battling stage one cancer, three kids. Tylee is at stage four with two small boys. Okay, that's definitely... Um, and then we have a prayer for healing um, from skin cancer. So we'll definitely be praying for that too. For Trish. Okay, well, 
I'm not really seeing anybody wanting to come on the live today. So I'm going to go ahead and say a closing prayer. I just want to let you know that I'm praying for each and every single one of you and um, that each of you have a place in my heart. And um, I, I am so grateful to all of you that you continue on this journey with me, that you continue to encourage me and support me. I'm praising God tonight for another year of life. Uh, tonight at midnight, um, it will be my birthday. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Another year older, and it seems like this next year of life is going to provide uh, many opportunities to share the gospel with people, uh, not only here in Pendleton and Pilot Rock, but also in Wenatchee. I have a week of prayer coming up in Wenatchee, if you guys could pray for me. Uh, next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I will be in Wenatchee doing a week of prayer for Cascade Christian academy and then also over the next couple of months i will be preparing to travel to australia to to do a little international traveling speaking and evangelism so let me go ahead and i'm going to say a prayer lord i just want to lift up each and every single person on um the bible in a year instagram live tonight and and even those who might watch this in the future who have prayer requests that are now unspoken Lord, um, can I just ask that you will be with Marco's cousin, Nikki? She has big decisions to make, and Lord, we know uh, that if she will acknowledge you in all of her ways, that you can show her which path to take. And so we just pray that she'll come to you with that decision. Uh, Jocelyn, who is battling stage three cancer, or stage one cancer, and then Taylee, stage four with two small boys. Lord, we also want to be praying for uh, Trish and her skin cancer. Um, and Lord, I just want to pray for each person listening tonight that we will keep our eyes on you, that we will receive that seal of the Holy Spirit on our lives, that we will spend time daily in your word and praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life, which is the seal, which is our guarantee of our inheritance for eternal life that we have in you. Thank you so much, Lord for giving us your word and for giving us your Holy Spirit, which is not only our comforter and uh, the one who brings peace into our life, but is also the one who leads us into all truth and helps us to walk in the ways of truth and in the ways everlasting. We love you, Lord, and thank you so much for this time together on the Bible in a Year Instagram Live for day 265 of 365. Be with all of us until we come together again tomorrow for our Bible in a Year Instagram Live. And be with each and every single person wherever they're at in the process of going through this Bible in a Year reading challenge. I just want to pray for all of the people who might have fallen behind or gotten discouraged or discontinued that you would help encourage them to pick up from where they left off and to keep going. And um, to know that you love them even if you don't complete the Bible in a year, even if you complete it in a year and a half or two years, God, you still love us. And uh, you just want us to spend time in your word so that we can receive the promises and the blessings that are in it. Um, and so that we can know how to pray and how your heart is longing to spend time with us. Thank you, Lord, for um, another year of life. And um, I just want to pray that if it's your plan for me to go to Australia, that you will finish opening the final doors to make that possible. Also, be with me as I'm going to be uh, doing a week of prayer in um, in Wenatchee next week at the Cascade Christian Academy. I just want to pray that um, you will uh, continue to prepare me and put all of your words and your love in my heart for the people that I'm going to be speaking to there. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody. Well, I love all of you. Um, thank you so much for being on the Bible in a Year um, Instagram Live and for being a part of the reading challenge. This has been Bible in a Year, day 265 of 365. Hey, you guys, we are only 100 days away from the finish line because today is 265, right? So uh, 100 days and we will hit the 365-day mark. God bless all of you, and I will see you next time.